the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries in gratitude for our Father's mercy, who sent his Son to show us the way to salvation, to call us to repent of our sins, and to trust our Father's mercy, as together we pray. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to him, Would that we have died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them, to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning a dew lay all about the camp, and when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses said to them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The Word of the Lord. responsorial psalm, the Lord gave them bread from heaven. What we have heard and know, and what our fathers have declared to us, we will declare to the generation to come the glorious deeds of the Lord and his strength and the wonders that he wrought. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. He commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained manna upon them for food and gave them heavenly bread. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. Man ate the bread of angels, food he sent them in abundance, and he brought them to his holy land, to the mountains his right hand had won. The Lord gave them bread from heaven. A 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard him and were taught in him, as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you. You are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father God has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you. It was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. My Father gives you true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Through human imagination and creativity, we have reached levels of progress that were unimaginable just a few generations ago. Nevertheless, as we communicate instantly in our jet age world, our nature remains the same. Before COVID, we could return routinely fly to Europe in eight or nine hours with meal and beverage service. After traveling eight miles above the storm clouds over a turbulent ocean, covering a third of the earth at 80% of the speed of sound traveling in an aluminum tube, you know what the comments were that we usually heard? Complaints about the food. And we hear a similar story in Exodus. After being freed from slavery, delivered from attackers in the parting of the Red Sea, as they were en route to their promised land, the chosen people were grumbling about their food. Today's Old Testament and Gospel readings speak of food, something at the forefront of our imagination, since without it, we can't survive. God has given us an environment to sustain the food we need. As physical beings created in the image and likeness of our God, our need for food is part of the divine wisdom to fulfill God's divine plan. In our complex and diverse economy, we are ultimately working for food. Scripture emphasizes our interdependent nature and our need for right relationships. Our need for food drives our commerce and motivates our mobility. And we think about food a lot. Andy Rooney, a clever commentator of old, 
Notice noted that cookbooks and diet books were the biggest sellers. One tells you how to prepare the food and the other tells you how not to eat it. And some have too much food while others have too little. We are called to share what God has given us to do our part to ensure the common good. Our physical needs parallel our spiritual needs. We need food to survive now, and we need food to survive forever. And we need each other to assure this nourishment. Until the last weekend of August, we will be hearing from the Bread of Life discourse about our spiritual food from the Gospel of John. And today we heard that many were looking for Jesus, probably hoping for another miracle, perhaps more food. Jesus understood and took the discussion deeper, teaching them not to work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life. Before he identifies himself as the bread of life, Jesus emphasized the authority of his teaching. The first stage of divine nourishment involves believing and integrating the life-giving word of God, who in the first letter of John is defined as love. Jesus' life-giving message needs our acceptance to stimulate our appetite for the bread of eternal life. Savoring selfless, selfless love and sacrificial service to others is an acquired taste. We all know physical hunger. Jesus is teaching us to become aware of our gift of spiritual hunger. Our instinctual drive to survive has been divinely gifted with reason and imagination. Our craving for survival stimulates our need for meaning. Our thirst for meaning is quenched in faith in God's word made flesh, Christ Jesus, who lived among us. Jesus gave signs as he was teaching the people of what was yet to come. Jesus' descriptive call to eat his flesh and drink his blood will come later as we continue this Bread of Life discourse. But we already know the rest of the story. The Second Vatican Council defined the Eucharist as the source and the summit of our faith. This sacrament defines our Catholicity. The divine nourishment of the body and blood of Christ Jesus is our Father's gift to help us through the power of the same Holy Spirit that inspired sacred scripture and conceived Jesus in Mary's womb. Reception is our participation in God's redemptive plan to bring eternal life to our relationship with God and with each other. Our Eucharist is the bread of life to sustain and stimulate growth in faith, hope, and charity, our nourishment along the way toward God's eternal kingdom that starts here. Nothing we can do can make this Eucharist more holy. For this sacrament of Jesus' love is perfect food, the self-sacrifice of Jesus who taught us of God's eternal kingdom. The lap supper nourishment that Jesus fed to his disciples some 2,000 years ago is the same body and blood of Christ Jesus that will soon be made present for us. And good nourishment involves good routine. On Sundays and Holy Days, we are called to hear God's word and to consume God's word made flesh. We consume this Eucharistic sacrifice to become what we eat, to help us become more disposed to see Christ Jesus in each other as we follow him together toward our Father's kingdom. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me, will never thirst. And the crowds ask to have this bread always. And we have it here. Now together let us profess our common faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. We now offer these prayers of petition to our ever-living and ever-loving God. We pray for the leaders of our church, that they may help us find unity in our Eucharistic nourishment, that we may all become what to see Jesus in each other and become what we eat. We pray to the Lord. All right. Okay, take three petitions. We bring these prayers of petition to our almighty and ever-living God. Almighty Father, we ask you to help all of us, to help the leaders of our church to grow in holiness as we receive our Eucharistic nourishment, that we may become what we eat, and to see Christ in each other, we pray to the Lord. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, religious life, and that all may grow in holiness through sacramental reception, we pray to the Lord. For all those who are suffering from man-made and natural disasters throughout the world, that our charity may bring them hope and help them find relief and even faith, we pray to the Lord. For the respect of the dignity of every human life, from conception, from conception till natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all who have died, we pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, we bring these prayers to you confident that through your divine mercy and divine providence, they will be heard for our benefit. And we bring them to you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ and humble himself to share our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, through the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, we will be accepted by you, Lord, and I sacrifice your sight to this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice, praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, in accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, Make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you made them holy so that the human race, founded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblations of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, St. Gerard, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire holy people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now, 
at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to all of us who receive it. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And the bread of life, says the Lord, whoever comes to me will not hunger, and whoever believes in me will not thirst. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.